Good morning. Good morning. I pray everyone has had a good night's restful sleep. Join me. Hallelujah. Join me, invite someone, tag someone. Good morning. Look at you all on here all early. <laughs> Bless the Lord. We are grateful for Daddy God this morning. We uh, will get started here in just a second. Please invite someone, share someone, share with someone to join us. I believe this is going to be a blessed word. It's blessed me already. Amen. Good morning, Q. Good morning, Brother Anthony. Good morning, Leah. Hallelujah. These are my waves to you. So wave back with some praises and some thumbs up as we go through this word this morning. Our God is greater. Hallelujah. We absolutely stand unshakable. We love him this morning. And we thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you that your grace and your mercy is available to us. Good morning, Brother Sam. We thank you that your mercy and your grace is available to us this morning. We thank you, God, that by our faith we can move mountains because nothing is impossible with you. All things are possible because you are our God, and we love you this morning, Daddy. We thank you. We thank you that our faith looks up to you. We thank you that our hope looks up to you. We thank you that we know that there is absolutely, positively nothing that is too hard for you. Nothing is too hard for you. You are a loving God. You are a kind God. You are a gracious God. You have given us every spiritual blessing. You made it available to us, God. And we want to use it wisely. We want to use it wisely. We want to walk in the fullness of who you are and who you are in us. So God, we bless your name this morning. We come thirsty. We come asking, what is it that you would have for us to do? And we bless your name, God. You are worthy to be praised. There is absolutely none like you, God. Father, I pray over everyone under the sound of my voice, God, that the thing they are asking you for, the things that they are asking you for, the things that they need for you to do, God, that they will see a swift turnaround, God. They will see answers, God. Hallelujah. God is asking you, what is it that you need? How may I help you? Good morning, Sister Viola. God is asking you this morning, how may I help you? He asked the man, what is it that you need? How can I help you? Hallelujah. Ah, yeah. Yes, Lord. See God. I know he's not our glorified bellhop, right? Or, our, well, he kind of may be a concierge. Hallelujah. But God, he, he, he waits on us. The Bible says God waits on us to come to the fullness of knowing who he is and who we are in him. He waits on us. And so he is our heavenly waiter. We know he's just not passing out, but he comes with that question this morning. What is it that you need? How may I help you? How may I help you? How may I help you? That person on the other end of the line, when, when they get on and you've asked for a specific person and they get on the call and they say, how may I help you, Miss Tate? How may I help you, Miss Golder? How may I help you, Miss Wells? How may I help you, Miss Yates? How may I help you? How may I help you, Miss Payne? How may I help you? 
How may I help you? That's the question God has. How may I help you, Mr. Anderson? How may I help you, Mr. Carson? How may I help you? How may I be of assistance? God is asking you this morning. He wants you to ask him. Ask him. He's your God. He's your father and he waits on you to come into the knowledge and the truth of who he is. He waits on you. He's waiting on you. He waits on you. He waits. He's waiting to return with the answer. He's waiting to give you the answer. Oh my God. Oh my God. I pray that somebody hears me this morning. I pray that somebody hears me this morning. God is saying, how may I help you? How may I help you, daughter? How may I help you, son? How may I help you, Q? How may I help you? How may I help you, Leah? How may I help you? Hallelujah. Glory to God. How may I help you, Cynthia? How may I help you? Yvette, how may I help you? That's God's question to us this morning. Okay, God, so we, we have some petitions. God, somebody needs healing. Somebody needs a, an issue, a blood stop, God. Somebody needs you to take away the stresses, God. Hallelujah, God. To answer their prayer financially. To answer their prayer for their health issue, God. To answer their prayer for that relationship issue, God. Oh, somebody needs you this morning. Good morning, Sister Towns. Oh, God is asking you, what is it that I can do for you this morning? Today, today. Today, how may I help you? Tag someone, share with someone, invite someone. This word in Ephesians chapter 1, I believe, is going to bless your socks off, if you got on socks. <clears throat> Hallelujah. God is good to us. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 that he has given us every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. You ready for next Saturday, Sister Towns? Hallelujah. Amen, Sister Wells. I've been asking. Okay. You said you've been asking? Mm. Okay. Cynthia, this is what I heard the Lord says. You haven't been specific. Be specific with God. Okay. I know people say, you can't, you'll be asking God all that. Ask God for whatever you want. He is your father. Ask him for what you need. He is your father. Be specific. Hallelujah. Not the ocean, but specific. Hallelujah. Ask God for exactly what it is, when you, how you need it to come. Now, be ready for him to switch it up. But he said, ask me. Ask me for whatever you will. And be specific. He's a specific God. Amen. Amen. So, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. The word is blessed. Hallelujah. The word is blessed. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the thumbs up. Hallelujah. Thank you. We give our claps and our praises to God this morning, bright and early. Thank you for joining us. My name, if you don't know, is Dr. Tuesday Tate, and we are in fourth watch prayer. 5 a.m. Fourth Watch Prayer. Hallelujah. And, and we bless God for your obedience. I pray a double portion blessing over you. Hallelujah. I pray God's goodwill over your life. I pray God's blessing over your life. I speak it over your life in the name of Jesus. That the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guards your heart and your mind. In Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That it comes from our Father God in heaven who rains down and pours down on you to give you exactly what you need when you need it. Hallelujah. To blow your mind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To make you stand in awe to say, look what the Lord has done. God did it and he did it again. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your God. Your God is ready. He is sitting with angels ready to be dispatched in your direction. Hallelujah. To bring you what you need. Hallelujah. How, uh, yeah, I just saw that. I just saw that. I just saw that. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Dispatched. Hallelujah. To bring you what you need. Hallelujah. Because you asked this morning. I want you to open your mouth. God needs for you to open your mouth and ask this morning. Ask for what you need for your husband, for your marriage. Hallelujah. Your current marriage. Hallelujah. For those of you who are waiting, your future marriage, God said, ask, 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 
Ask, seek, and knock. Ask. Hallelujah. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too big for God. Supernatural debt cancellation. A may for those of us who are single. The man who is after God's own heart. Hallelujah. Will come and find you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Declare we will celebrate 50 years of marriage. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know how young you are, but if you my age, I'm 51. We we need 50 would be glorious. Amen. We're going to celebrate if you're in your 20, 60, 70 years. Declare it in Jesus' name. Ask God for what you want this morning. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Glory to God. It says, Praise God. And the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who through Jesus, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing that heaven has to offer. God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing that heaven has to offer. Now, that's saying something right there. That heaven has to offer. Not just what God has to offer, but what heaven has has to offer heaven you know heaven with with the gates that are are 12 feet tall with pearls as big as your head hallelujah hallelujah yes with streets paved in gold with the the cherubim and the seraphim constantly flying and, and around uh, the mercy seat saying holy 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 heaven everything with mansions that that have been assigned to each and every last one of us a dwelling place Hallelujah, that he went to go and prepare for you and for me. Think about it. Every spiritual blessing in heaven has been made available to you. Every one of them. Every one of them. He didn't, he didn't leave nothing out. He left nothing out. Hallelujah. It says that he blessed you with every spiritual blessing in high places. One text says he takes us to those blessings in high places. Well, what does that look like? My God, what does that look like? That that he, grace, he says that he will bless you, that blessings, you are worthy of these blessings. And because of that, we praise God that you count us worthy. You count us worthy of every spiritual blessing in heaven. In the heavenly realms. Every realm goes higher and higher. I mean, we know that, that was it John or Paul? The Bible said that he was in the third heaven. Every heaven. Every, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. That should make, I got, you got to get the picture of what heaven looks like. The glory of it. Why do we want to go there? Where, where there's fruit of every imagination. For every healing, the Bible says, on the tree of life. Good God Almighty. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Where there's nothing but worship all day long. Every spiritual blessing. No sickness, no disease, no infirmity. You, you leave this earth with one hand, you're going to be in heaven with both of your hands to lift them up and praise them all day long. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody should get excited about that. That should make somebody happy this morning. That every spiritual blessing has been given to you. So what you doing with it? You got it? Now what? What are you doing with that blessing? What are you doing with those spiritual blessings that God has given us? The Bible says, He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing that heaven has to offer. That is available in the heavenly realm. So somebody asked me, well what are they? What are they? What are these spiritual blessings? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about these spiritual blessings. The first one says in, chapter, in, in uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, it says, Before the creation of the world, God chose you. He chose you. The spiritual blessing of knowing that you have been chosen. I, I've said this before. I'm not sure if I said it here on the line, but... The difference between birthing your children and adopting a child, right? When, when, when you adopt a child, you go into the, um, 
you go into the adoption facility, you go into the orphanage, and you spend time with the children. You spend time with the children. And so as you spend time with the children, you may walk in and see one that you say, oh my God, that's our child. That's my son. That's my daughter. And you spend time. And so you get to pick. Now, we're not talking about like going to pick out a puppy. No, 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 no. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about choosing a child from among children. Choosing your child from among children. That is the blessing of being adopted into this. God um, picked. Yes, he did. The children of Israel, he could, have he could have chosen anyone, I mean, right? He could have, but he chose the children of Israel. He chose them to say, this is who the lineage that I'm going to uh, declare my son has come through and has come through, okay? He could have chose anybody. He really could have. And then after he called them his chosen, he then wove us in and declared us Gentiles, not black people, but anybody who's not a Jew. He chose us and what and wove us in. When you confess Jesus Christ and say, you think you chose God. You didn't choose God. You didn't choose God. God chose you. When you were sitting on that bench, when you were sitting on that at that stool at that bar, hallelujah. I I, rem, I, I used to uh, minister to strippers. When you was on that pole, uh-huh. Yeah, when you was walking the street, when you was hitting that pipe, when you was smoking that weed, when you was getting drunk, yeah, you thought he chose you. No, 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 you chose him. No, he chose you. All you did was make a decision because he kept tapping you on your shoulder, because he kept shaking you. Hallelujah. Because he kept letting you trip over your own feet and over your own words and over your own life. He chose you, and all you did was look around and said, who is that calling me? Who keep tapping me? What is this? And you made a choice to accept him. Hallelujah. To call upon the name of the Lord. But God chose you before the foundations of the world. He wove you in your mother's womb and gave you a purpose. Hallelujah. And when you were birthed, he gave you time to come into the knowledge and the truth of who he is. Hallelujah. So that you could receive him. As your Savior and Lord, that is good news this morning. God chose you. That's the first spiritual blessing. Hallelujah. All these things that are peculiar to us that don't make any sense. Why would he choose me? Yep, he chose you before the foundations of the world, but you had to accept his invitation. When you we were raggedy, when you were lying, when you were stealing, when you were cheating, when you were fornicating, when you were committing adultery, all of that. When you was flying off the handle with your bad temper. When you was cussing folk out. Glory to God. All of that. And he said, come on Tuesday. Come on, Yvette. Come on. Come on. Come on, Sister Viola. Come on. You my daughter. Come on. Come on, Sister Wells. Come on. Come on, Sister Treonda. Come on. He was like, come on. He kept beckoning us. Thank God for the beckoning. Thank God for, thank God for the continuous trips and and slip ups amen because some of that is what brought us into wait a minute i don't want to keep living like this i talk about it in my book that when when i kept you know being in relationships and being hurt by this one and hurt by that one even though i i said yes to god to walk in in honor of whole of of, of waiting until marriage but by then i had done the do boo but to wait until marriage. Hallelujah. I don't know the second time version thing. I don't know who made that up. But anyway, it ain't biblical. But <laughs> glory to God. So, but I, I said that I made uh, the decision. I, I, I went to God because my heart was broken. Because I said, I don't want to keep doing this. I don't want to keep living. I, some, and then I, I found in the word that when the word says that when you, you have sex outside of marriage, you are not only sinning against God, you're sinning against yourself. And I had to, I had to say, well, wait a minute now. I don't want to keep sinning against myself. What that looked like now, this might feel good, but what you're talking about, I'm sinning against myself. So when, when he starts to show you what his word means and you apply it to your life, there's, a, there's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And that conviction is what draws us to him. Now, the truth is, I had accepted Christ at 13 years old. But let me help you. I didn't really know what that meant. I didn't know what that meant. I had no idea what it meant to be saved. 
to live holy, to walk uprightly before the Lord. And let's be clear, after that, even when we have an understanding, we still will slip. We still will make a mistake. But thank God. Thank God for his forgiveness. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. Thank God that we can confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of, of all unrighteousness. Everything tied to that thing, he will cleanse us. Glory to God. So the first thing he did in giving us every spiritual blessing is that... Good morning, uh, Sister Nance Robinson. He chose us and in choosing us listen he chose us to be holy he chose us so that we could be perfected in his presence he chose us to be holy i know i know sometimes you don't feel holy right Sometimes you feel like, well, dang, go on it. I keep doing this thing. I, I keep saying this thing. I keep thinking this way. And this is not how God wants me to think. This is not how God wants me to live. Lord, help me. And that's where grace comes in. That's where his grace comes in. He chose you in Christ. He actually selected you for himself as his own. He chose you in Christ. And he selected you. For his own, to be your husband man, to be your savior, to be your Lord, to be your keeper, to be your sustainer, to be your healer, to be your provider. He selected you as his own. That's good. That's why he's everybody's husband man, whether you are male or female. Your first husband is Jesus Christ. He selected you. He selected you. Listen. When I when I was out there, you know, dating and doing all that, one thing I did not do is compete compete against women. And nor did I feel like I gotta have this one. I'm certainly you're in love and in your immaturity. Oh my God, I gotta have him. But God showed me some one time. <clears throat> I come from Michigan, and we live near the water, and and there's beaches there, right? And one day, <laughs> the Lord said, "Would you take sand to the beach? I promise you." Would you take sand to the beach? Well, heck, he no. I think I was going in my mind about some man. and <clears throat> I know exactly when it was. Yeah, I remember who it was. And I had gone home in the middle of the night because I found out that the gentleman I was dating had gotten his ex-girlfriend pregnant. Well, I guess she wasn't too much of an ex, right? <laughs> Where you got? He got her pregnant. So in my heartbreak, it was probably midnight, some crazy time. I drove all the way to Michigan, climbed in my mother's bed. The next day... I went, um, I just decided to go to the beach. I decided, the, go, the Lord let me. And as I was walking, and I'm one of these weird people. I don't like, I am no, I don't like sand. Like, if I'm going to walk in the sand, I got to take my sandals off. Because I, I don't like that feeling between my foot and the shoe. So I took my shoe off, and I'm walking. And the Holy Spirit said this as clear as day. And, and I was halfway saved then. Um, I wasn't walking this journey. And the Lord said, as clear as day, would you take sand to the beach? Now, I hadn't really experienced hearing God. So today I would say God said it was God. It was it was the presence of the Holy Spirit in me. But it, in my mind, it was me thinking, would I take sand to the beach? Well, no. Who takes sand to the beach? And, 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 and it, became, it was this parallel that God showed me. You ain't got a trip on who wants you and who don't want you. If he cheat, let him go. Good God Almighty, he don't want the blessing that I've put in you for him. Amen. Peace two fingers. You don't take sand to the beach. You don't, you ain't gotta you ain't gotta be tripping. You don't have to be tripping. Because there is someone who is going to select you just like God did. Just like Jesus did to have you as his own. Glory to God. And there is somebody that you're gonna be willing to say, Amen. I, choose, I accept the invitation. Good God Almighty. So the Bible says that before the foundations of the world, he accepted us. And then the word goes on to say, he took us and consecrated us and set us apart for him, for a purpose-driven, blameless life that was established in love. Listen, for a purpose-driven life that was established in love for a purpose-driven blameless life 
You like what? Blameless. Blameless. You 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 set me apart to be holy. That means he consecrated you. He chose you so that you could be holy. And he would seat set you apart. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I know. Listen, this is why sometimes you, the Bible says we are peculiar, those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ. But sometimes there's a peculiar, peculiar peculiarness. You feel like, why why, why do I think different? For, I ain't talking about crazy thinking. I'm talking about, you, you may think ahead of people. You may think above people. N not, that you, not that you are above people, but ahead of people, right? So you're th you thought of something six months ago, a year ago, and now you're hearing it on TV or it's being preached about and you're like, oh my God, the Lord showed me that months ago, weeks ago. And so it, it's him, it's that peculiar thing. It's, it's he sets you apart. G, uh, uh, Paul said, Paul said it was given unto me a thorn in the flesh because of these great revelations, because of the things that God had shown him. There was a, 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 uh huh. There was a thorn given to him, the Bible says, to buffet him. He was set apart. He was chosen by God. This man who sent Christians to be murdered, God knocked him off his horse and he was set apart. He was set apart from the foundations of the world, world even though he was doing all of that other stuff. And God plucked him out and declared him blameless. And if you think about the writings of Paul, Paul often was trying to convince these people of who he was. I'm Paul, and I'm this, and I'm that, and da, da, da. And then finally, Paul was like, look, I ain't going to keep telling y'all who I am. Because I know I had an experience with God, and I know who God called me to be. That's what God needs to say to some of you this morning. Stop trying to convince people of who you are. Let me say this to the single people, and if you're married, it's going to help you too. When he comes, when she comes, they need to know who you are. They need to already know who you are. Don't be trying to convince. Well, I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm a minister, and I have prophetic gifts, and God's called me to intercession, and I know I get up and pray at, at, at you know three four o'clock sometimes. I do this five a.m. prayer. Now listen, if your husband wants you in bed Tuesday mornings at five o'clock, I mean you got what, seven, five, six other days, good God Almighty, that you can stay in the bed with him, glory to God. But if it's him, call to that. Oh, I'm called to this, I'm called to be. They need to know who you are at this age. They need to know who you are when you come. And if they don't know, they need to pray and ask God, who is this woman that you who that you sent before me? Who is this man that you sent into my life, good Lord? Show me. You shouldn't have to convince anybody of who you are. Hallelujah. They they may not know the full capacity of you because you don't even know sometimes the full capacity of you of what all God has really called you to do. But you shouldn't have to be convincing nobody. So, so here you are. You have been set apart to be holy, perfect in his presence, blameless without fault. This is good already. So he chose you. He chose you and then the Bible says he adopted you. This is what I was talking about earlier. You were picked out. You were selected from among, pulled out, set apart. That's good. And then the Bible says he adopted you because of his great love. He had already decided the moment my God, from your mother's womb. Let's go back to that orphanage. As soon as that, that mother, that father, that, that couple puts their eye on that baby. Hallelujah. They say, that's the one. And we want to adopt him. We want to adopt her. Now, the beauty of those who, who get the opportunity to have someone carry their child for them because they weren't able to carry their child themselves. They already love that child. That's not an adoption. That's their child. We're talking about adopting someone who does not have the same DNA as you, who does not have blood running through their veins that's like you, ain't got your, your, your hair, your eyes, your skin. You try to pick somebody when they go in and adopt that look close like them so they won't have 50 million questions. But what about these Caucasian people who date, who, who, who adopt? Asian children and African children and black children and, 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 you know, the whole gamut. Everybody know them ain't theirs. Ah, to be loved through adoption. To be chosen through adoption. To be accepted and selected 
through adoption. That's good news this morning. That should make somebody happy. That you are chosen. It may not feel like it. Well, dang, I feel like the, the stepchild. I feel like, you know, uh, uh, what's her name? The, the little girl with the pumpkin and stuff. Uh, the, the, yeah, her with the slipper. Yeah, yeah, all of that. But, but, but Cinderella came out on top at the end. <laughs> Hallelujah. Cinderella came out on top at the end. Yes, she did. Slipper and all. She got the man. Uh-huh. She got the kingdom. Yes, she did. The castle. Good God Almighty. She didn't have to have a pumpkin to turn into a carriage no more. She, uh, she got all of that. Hallelujah. When she was mistreated as the stepchild. But when someone, because that's a stepmother who never adopted her. She never made her her own. Good God Almighty. What a privilege. What a privilege this morning. Hallelujah. Tag somebody. Invite somebody. Share with somebody. Somebody needs to know this morning that God chose you and he adopted you. Hallelujah. I know. I know there's millions of Christians. I know there's millions of believers. But you, listen, if it was just you, if it was just you, beloved, Jesus would have went to the cross. If it was just you, God would have sent his son. If it was just you, Jesus would have took the stripes. He would have took the thorns. He would have took the nails. He would have took the piercing. If it was just you. But the privilege that he adopted, he chose and adopted all of us. For his good pleasure. That's good news this morning. So he, he freely chose us. Because of his kindness. Because of his kindness. Because of his kindness. You know what the scripture says. About God's kindness. We know what the scripture says. About his kindness. His kindness is better than life. Oh my God. His kindness is. Is better than life. And because of that, the Bible says, let your lips praise him. Glory to God. Because of his loving kindness, he chose you. Because he wanted you. He wanted you. I know, you know who you are. I always say, you know, we thank God for all the things he's done. But the truth is, oh my God, what about the things he's kept from us? What about the what ifs? What if this would have happened? What if that would have happened? What if I still would have done this? What if I still would have done that? Good God Almighty, but God. God kept you from making the wrong decision. And even if you made the wrong decision, he saved you. He didn't let you stay in it. He didn't let you stay in that abusive situation. He didn't let you stay on that job where they were mistreating you. He didn't let you stay in a family where you were being abused and mistreated. He let you go through it. He let you come out on the other side. Hallelujah. And now you have a testimony. Glory to God. His loving kindness is better than life. His loving kindness towards you is great. It's so great that he chose you. His loving kindness is so great that he chose you from among. He pulled you from out. He set you apart. He said you have purpose. Hallelujah. And he counts you blameless today. I think God, okay. God says somebody under the sound of my voice needs to forgive themselves. You did it. You sure did. You did it. You sure did. And God said, now forgive yourself. Let it go because I've let it go. I've cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. And I promise you I'm not going to remember anymore. So why you keep remembering it? Why you keep letting people bring you back to a place of remembrance? Jesus said, put me in. God said, put me in remembrance of my word. He said, remember this. Remember the salvation. Remember the sacrifice that I made. He didn't tell you to keep reflecting on your past and the wrong that you've done. Don't let people keep taking you back. I will not go back to weak and miserable ways. And so, why you keep letting people try to take you back? No, 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 no. I won't go back. No. No, I will not. And so, the Bible says his loving kindness is better than life. His loving kindness is great towards you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because of this, we should praise him. 
because of this. Give him some hearts. Give him some thumbs up. Clap God up this morning. Because of this, we should praise him. We should give him all thanks. Hallelujah. Because his loving kindness is your refuge. It's a place for you to remember what the Lord has done time and time and time again. He did it then. And if he did it then, he's going to do it again. God, hallelujah. He healed this one. He going to heal that one. He healed you from this. He can heal you from that. He restored you from that. He restored you from that. And you recover, you'll recover again. And you're going to recover all. Everything that was stolen. Everything that was eaten up. Everything that you gave away in ignorance. You thought it was love. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to give it back. Credit scores. Hallelujah. I'm going to give it back. Hallelujah. Everything you lost, I'm going to give it back. Remember my loving kindness and praise me. Praise me in advance for what's to come. Hallelujah. I wish I could put some thumbs up on this thing. Hallelujah. In the name of, somebody put them up for me. God, hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you. I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. I thank you in advance for what you've already promised me. I thank you in advance for your love and your kindness. Hallelujah. We thank you in advance. You will recover all. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. You will recover all. You want your husband to love you the way he used to, to treat you the way that he used to, your wife to treat you the way that she used to. I declare that you will recover all. Oh, God, give it back to him, God. Double, double, double. Bigger, better, greater, more. Glory to God. His loving kindness is why we should praise him. His loving kindness is why we should give him thanks. Hallelujah. He have to be kind to you. He didn't have to be kind to me, but he chose us. He chose us. He chose us and he adopted us and he wove us in. Hallelujah. Just like every knit on this top, every knit in your shirt, every knit in your sweater, every latch. Hallelujah. He wove you together like that. Hallelujah. I love material that don't snag. Hallelujah. Because that's the way, that, that's the, the quality of the weaving. That's the quality of how God has, has interwoven us and, and woven us into the family of God. Glory to God. His loving kindness. His loving kindness is better than life. It is precious to us, oh God. It is bone to our, it is marrow to our bones. His loving kindness is marrow to our bones. Breath to our lungs, peace to our mind, his loving kindness. Hallelujah. I could stay right there, Sister Joyce. I could stay right there. Woo! Glory to God. Yes, Karen. Yes, 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 his loving kindness. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. His loving kindness is available to us as a as the shadow of his wings. Hallelujah, that we can, we can get up under it and find safety. His loving kindness. When, when our family ain't kind, when our spouses ain't kind, when our friends aren't kind. Good God, our co-workers not kind. Oh God, his loving kindness. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he chose us. And then he adopted us. Ah, and then his blood set us free. His blood set us free. We're talking about the spiritual blessings of God. See, see, you got to get this. See, I know y'all thought I was might have list. These are the blessings. Every spiritual blessing in heaven. I was going to talk about y'all going to get cars, right? Y'all going to get house. No, no, no. Spiritual blessings are the things that are going on inside of you as, I'm, as, as the word is being taught and the word is being declared. And the word is coming alive and agreeing with your spirit. Spiritual blessings that agree with your spirit. And see, the stuff that agree with your spirit, you can't, it can't be taken away. The truth cannot be removed. The truth cannot be uprooted. The truth cannot be snatched. The truth cannot be taken away. Every spiritual blessing in heaven, in the heavenly realms, have been given to you. Good God Almighty. And he ain't dangling them, boo. He ain't dangling them. He ain't saying, come and get it. No, no, no. It's yours. 
It's yours. He's placed them in your hands. He's placed them in your spirit. You, they agree with your soul. Your mind should start thinking differently. Your emotions should start changing right now. It should become not my will, God, but your will be done. I got to nevertheless in me because I understand every spiritual blessing has been given to me. Ha, God, I've been chosen. I've been adopted. From among, I've been selected, I want you, Tuesday. Good God Almighty, from the womb, I want you. Yep, you went that away, you went that away, you went this way. Hallelujah, but I kept pulling you back. Hallelujah, I was a good shepherd. I kept sending my staff out and pulling you back, tripping up your knees, tripping up your ankles, tripping up your feet. Hallelujah, I kept pulling you back. You kept stumbling, so when you fall, you'll look up and say, what in the heavens? Yes, what in the heavens? What in the heavens? What in the heavens? What in the heavens? Good God Almighty, what in the heavens? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You were chosen. You were adopted. And by his blood, you have been set free from every sin. That should make somebody happy this morning. Woo! Glory. You've been set free from every sin. Every sin. Every sin. Every sin. Every sin. Every, sin. every last one of them. Don't let the enemy tell you that that sin is unforgivable. Every sin. I already told you what 1 John said. He's faithful and just to forgive you of every sin and to cleanse you. Hallelujah. To make you right. Good God Almighty. Don't let the enemy beat you up. Right now, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for that. Forgive me for that. You know what your dad is. Forgive me for that, oh God. Forgive me when my hands weren't clean and my heart wasn't pure and my words weren't right. Forgive me. You know what your, your, what your thing is. Ask him. Tag somebody. Share this with somebody. Invite somebody. They need to come on in this morning and understand the spiritual blessings that, are, that have been downloaded and given to us who are believers in Jesus Christ. Because we called upon the name of the Lord and God gave this to us. Oh yes. Oh yes, Sister Diola. The blood. It still washes. It still reaches. It still cleanses. My God, when I found out that the word says that the blood even cleanses my conscience. What? What? The blood cleanses my conscience? So, therefore, there is now no condemnation. There's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no embarrassment. Oh, God, just let the word work on you, honey. Just let the word work. Let the word work. When you, when you start seeing how the word is just intertwined and interwoven. Oh, so that's why I don't have to feel guilty. This is why uh, the word says that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Because the blood covered it. It washes me as white as slow. It cleanses even my conscience. That's good news this morning. Hey, if I ain't said nothing else, somebody should be shouting right there. You need your conscience cleansed. Because the enemy keeps wanting to take you back to guilt and shame and embarrassment. Yep, you had the abortion. Yeah, you did. You did. Okay. But God. Yep, yep. You shot up. Yep, you used drugs. Yep, yep. Sure did. Yep, okay. And the blood. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, you've been married two, three times. But this one right here, I got it right. Yep, yep, yep. Or I'm waiting till the right one comes. Yep, you did. You did all of that. You stole. Yes, you did. You cheated. Yep, you did. You lied. Sure did. Yep, but the blood, the blood, the blood. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Keep me. Ah, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Don't let him beat you up. God has all power. And that power lives in you. So, because you've been chosen, you've been adopted, and by his blood, you have been set free of every sin. And the fifth one, the fifth spiritual blessing is that he forgives your failures, your trespasses. <laughs> he forgives your trespasses. He forgives. See, there's a difference between sin and trespasses. Trespasses is when you break the law. No trespassing and you ignore that sign and you step over into somebody's property anyway, you break the law. When you speed and it says 55 and you're doing 70, help Lord, 
That's trespassing. You're breaking a law. And so many times we break spiritual laws. And we don't even realize we're breaking spiritual laws. And so the Bible says that there is a spiritual blessing that God has given us. That not only has his blood set us free, justified us as if we never sinned. Good morning, uh, Pastor Benny. The Bible says... He also forgives our trespasses. Trespasses are a kind of sin, but they are a sin where you have broken a law. Okay? So, all them laws that they couldn't keep up with in the Old Testament, they were constantly trespassing against God. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who have sinned or trespassed against us, who have done something against us. Trespassing, the forgiveness of a trespass is something that you've done against God or against someone else. He forgives that too. <laughs> he forgives that too. It's some stuff we do and we like, I did that? I said that? Oh God, and he forgives it and then he casts it. He casts it as far as the east is from the west. And he said, I'm not going to remember it no more. I'm not going to remember it. Oh, he forgives our trespasses. That should make somebody happy this morning. Because we all then did something against somebody. That later we was like, man, I can't believe I did that. Lord, thank you, Jesus, for forgiving my trespasses. God may require you to go back and ask for forgiveness from that person too. Yes, he might do that. So that your slate is clean. Oh, this is good. This is good. Every spiritual blessing. We got, we got freedom. We got forgiveness. My God. Of our failures. Of our trespasses. Oh, my God. You failed. You failed God. You failed your family. You probably failed a spouse. You might have failed your kids. But God, God forgives it. God forgives it. You might have said things you shouldn't have said and wished you could take it back. God forgives it. Oh, my God, yes. That's good news this morning. Every spiritual blessing has been made available to you. And the Bible says he's given them to us freely for his good pleasure. For us. Oh, we give him glory this morning. Then he says, then he says, I'm going to press on through because we got about 15 minutes. He said, and he poured out his kindness upon you. He pours out his kindness upon you. And he gives us every type of wisdom and insight that we need and desire. Every spiritual blessing. Wisdom, insight. Wisdom, insight wisdom and understanding he gives you that that is a spiritual blessing every last one of you you ain't got to have the gift of wisdom or words of wisdom or words of knowledge he has given wisdom and understanding to every believer that is a spiritual blessing that is a, you don't have to keep making wrong or foolish decisions because wisdom is in you he is omni Omni, is that Omni Sapien? Omni, whichever one it is, for wisdom. He is all wise, and all wise is in you. The all wise God, be glory, honor, dominion, and power, both now and forever, is in you. That's good news this morning. Yes, it is. Then it says, He has revealed all mysteries to you. All mysteries. This is why that whole season, and, and I think they're still capitalizing on it. And, you know, that's cool, I guess. The secret, I, I was like, ain't no secrets in God. When you're a believer, God reveals all mysteries to you. Ain't no secrets. I ain't, ain't no secrets. The Bible says there's a spiritual blessing that God has given to all believers that he has revealed every mystery to us. It's in the Bible. We just got to study. Ha <laughs> ha. Right? We just got to read. Every mystery has been given to us. And it comes through our relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. And the last one, number seven, is that he chose you according to his plan. He has a plan for your life. It's according to his plan for your life. We know what Jeremiah 29 says. He knows the plans, the purpose that he has for your life. And the Bible confirms this in Ephesians. That all of this that he has given us, 
him choosing us, him adopting us, him forgiving us for our mistakes, hallelujah, for our failures, our trespasses, him setting us free by, by his blood, him pouring out his kindness upon us and giving us all wisdom and all understanding, hallelujah, revealing his mysteries to us. All of these things was for his good plan for us and for the advancing of his kingdom. Everything you need is in God this morning. Everything you need is in God this morning. And let's just solidify it with understanding what Psalms 103 says. Praise be to God. For today, we are going to remember his benefits. That every spiritual blessing, the spiritual blessings are his benefits towards us. He forgives us of our sins. He heals us of all disease. He redeems us from the pit of hell. Good God Almighty. He, crying, he crowns us with loving kindness and compassion. He satisfies our desire with good things. Hallelujah. So that our, our youth is renewed like an eagle. These are the benefits of God. Hallelujah. He works righteousness in us and he opposes, hallelujah, those things that are an injustice. He comes on our behalf and he defends us. Good God Almighty. His compassion and his grace towards us, hallelujah, is great. He is slow to anger. We ain't going to forget his benefits this morning. We're not going to forget, hallelujah, hallelujah, his spiritual blessings that are forever available to us this morning. Hallelujah. He will... He will shut down the accuser on our behalf. Glory to God. We will not forget your benefits this morning. Hallelujah. He will not harbor anger towards us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As high as the heaven is to the earth, so great is his love towards those who fear him. Oh, we will not forget God's benefits this morning. Every spiritual blessing has been given to you, beloved. And I pray that you walk in the truth and the knowledge of who you are in God and what he has blessed you with. Do I need to say it again? Yeah. Psalms 103. Praise be to God for my soul boasts in the Lord this morning. And I will not forget his benefits. He forgives my sins. Make it personal this morning. He forgives my sins. He heals me of all my diseases, all of my dis-ease and diseases. Whatever you do not have that is not representing peace in your life, wherever you have worry, wherever you have fear, wherever you have doubt, He heals your dis-ease. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear. The love of God covers a multitude of sins this morning. You need to understand the benefits of God. Psalms 103 says, don't forget his benefits. Ephesians 1 reminds us and solidifies in the New Testament. What are those benefits? Every spiritual blessing in heaven. Didn't you hear him again? Ephesians, he chose you. He adopted you. He set you free by his blood. He forgives your failures, your mistakes, your trespasses. He reveals his mysteries. Good God Almighty. And he does all of this according to his good will and his good pleasure because he has a plan for your life. Glory to God. And he pours out his loving kindness upon you with wisdom and understanding. It's all available to you, beloved. So don't forget his benefits. He forgives your sins. He, he heals your diseases. He cleanses you of all unrighteousness. He pulls you out of the pit. Good God Almighty, yes, he did. He pulled me out. I know he pulled some of you out because this is the love of God. And he satisfies your desires with good things. Hallelujah. That your youth, that you will be renewed like an eagle. Hallelujah. That your youth will be renewed like an eagle. I know you're saying, I'm 40-something, I'm 50-something, I'm 60-something. How can my youth be renewed? Because God can restore. God can renew. Hallelujah. You might be 60, but you look 40. Hallelujah. You might be 50, but you look 30. Because he will renew you like an eagle and you will soar. 
don't forget God's benefits. He loves you. He loves you and he has a great purpose and a plan for your life. And I pray that someone has been encouraged this morning. Someone has been strengthened in their inner man. And so, God, we thank you for your word. I thank you that your word has fallen upon good ground. I thank you that it will produce 40, 60, and 100 fold. I pray that someone sees themselves in a new light, in this new light of this new day, where new mercies were provided to them, where they recognize the benefits of God that he forgives their sins. He heals us of all diseases. He renews our strength like an eagle. Hallelujah, God. He pulls us out of the pit. He sets us on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that we are the righteousness of God in and through Christ Jesus. We choose to be called the righteousness of God today because we place ourselves in your hands and we thank you that every spiritual blessing in heaven is ours. And because of that, we can have the material blessings that come from being chosen and adopted, hallelujah, loved with an everlasting love and kindness. Thank you for drawing us here this morning, and I pray that someone has been blessed. Tag someone, share someone, even after we're, this with someone, even after we get off the line. You know your friends who are struggling with do I have purpose? Why am I here? Hallelujah. And I, I pray even now, Father, for the mind of, of our teenagers, our young people who are, who are questioning this thing of suicide. And I don't want to be here. Even adults, we rebuke that in Jesus' name. We appropriate the blood in Jesus' name over anybody's mind, their soul in Jesus' name. Let them understand they are spiritually blessed to be in God. God, build them up in their most holy faith, God. Let them see purpose in their lives, oh God. Let someone cross their path that tells them they are loved by God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, there is no failure in God because he forgives our failures. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, there is no guilt and shame in God. Hallelujah. Because the blood covers it. Oh God, I speak to that spirit in the name of Jesus. Ha! of suicide in Jesus name and I command it to go I command it to go you will live you will not die you will declare hallelujah the goodness of the Lord hey, in the land of the living in the land of the living glory to God in the land of the living I speak peace over the mind in the name of Jesus. We speak to mental illness, mental disease, mental dis-ease in the name of Jesus. And we declare peace. We declare peace. We declare peace. We declare peace. From the top of their head, their mind, beautiful mind, hallelujah, to the soles of their feet. Peace to their heart. Peace to their lungs. Peace to their liver. Peace to their kidney. Peace to their digestive system. Peace. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Peace to their joints. Peace to their marrow. God, we speak peace this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Let the peace of God dispel toxic relationships and toxic way of thinking. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Let your love cast it out in the, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus, my ear. Oh, shit. Faith. 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 Hey, faith. 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 Birth, birthing faith this morning. Birthing faith in your people this morning. Birthing faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes, seasoned with grace. My name means grace, so I receive that. Glory to God. Glory to God. I pray that someone is blessed this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Does anybody... Philip. Does anybody have a, a son, husband, father, brother named Philip? I just heard Philip. 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 If that's you, you can put it here. You can inbox me. If it's you, you can put it Philip. Philip. In the name of Jesus. Hashabah Sekor Messiah. Philip. 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 God said, Philip, stop running. Hiya. Philip. 
Kaya la bo se kora masaya la ro she kororo sabahaya. Mo ba ba bo sha ma 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 na haya. Yeah God, fill up. I speak peace to fill up this morning in the name of Jesus. Haya la bo she kora masaya la da bo she ke te bo sabahaya. Haya la sa. Yero sha ma haya. Na na de 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 kora masaya. Fill up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of G, okay, Joyce, Sister Joyce. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray over Philip right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray over his mind. Hallelujah. I pray and declare purpose in Jesus' name. He will not, he will not have quick feet in the name of Jesus. We declare that his feet will be steady in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. He will walk in purpose in Jesus' name. We declare peace over his mind, peace over his body, peace over his soul, peace over his spirit. Oh, God, I thank you. Thank you. Father, I thank you for a sister who will call out for her brother. Oh, God, Sister Joyce, call out his name in the name of Jesus, and we touch and agree in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. His past will not haunt him in the name of Jesus this time. Hallelujah. He'll get it right in the name of Jesus. He wants to get it right. He wants to do right in the name of Jesus, God. So we thank you. We thank you for Brother Philip this morning. Hallelujah. We call him like Philip in the Bible. One who walked with God. One who experienced God. One who had a testimony. Hallelujah. Of God and what God is able to do. In the name of Jesus. I'm hearing the name Carl. 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 In Jesus name. Carl. In Jesus name. In Jesus' name. If that is you, you can put it here. Brother, bro, no, I don't know if it's a brother. I don't think it's a brother. But Carl, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we seal the prayer over Philip, so it shall be. We call Philip great in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Carl, in the name of Jesus. I think Carl is a son. Are you saying that, Lord? If it's you and uh, we are over time, you can certainly put it here. I'll wait another minute or so. Hallelujah. So we can touch and agree. You can certainly inbox me. Do not be afraid of the move of the Holy Spirit. Do not be afraid of the move, the, the move of, of words of knowledge. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not spooky. Hallelujah. It is God. Hallelujah. Because he loves you. Because he loves you. Because he loves you. Because he loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear the name Carl. Carl. Amen, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, Lord, we love you. If it's you, uh, you can inbox me. And we can certainly, I will certainly even pray then. But we have sealed this word over Brother Philip. Let me say this. God reveals nothing unless he's going to do it. There's no need for God to speak to someone about someone unless the thing that he wants to do in that person's life uh, is not is is going it's going to happen. That's the only reason he would he would drop someone's name or someone's situation in someone's spirit is because God is going to answer that prayer. Amen. So I love you with the love of the Lord. The Lord says the same. We will be together next week for fourth watch 5 a.m. prayer. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you. You have a great day. Pray for me as I pray for you. Share this with someone. Invite someone. Let's grow this. Let's grow this. I think God is doing something awesome. I know everybody ain't going to get up at five, but even if they join in and just turn it on and lean over and fall back to sleep, it's all good because the word will not return void. It'll go in to their subconscious while they're sleeping. Amen. I love you. God bless you.